G'day YouTube and welcome back to Perfecting Pete. So a bit more of a positive episode this time around. Um, I'm feeling I'm in a much better place, which we'll talk about in a sec. But um, today's topic I wanted to talk about is how often you should weigh yourself. Um, I think I mentioned this in one of like a long time ago in one of an earlier episode um, that it was something I wanted to cover. So <clears throat> I figured now is as good a time as any to, to, uh, to cover it. Before we get into that, if this is your first time on the channel, thanks very much for joining us. Uh, this is the place to come to uh, if you want to see a weight loss journey in progress. Um, I release videos every Tuesday. I give my no bullshit approach to um, you know, weight loss as a journey, all the things I've learned as a layman along the way, uh, what's worked and what hasn't, the, you know, the, the, the ups and the downs. So um, you know, if, if you've been thinking about losing weight for a long time and and struggle to get off that couch and, and stop resembling it. Uh, if you struggle to get the motivation up to get started, if you don't know where to start, then this is the channel for you. Uh, check out some of the previous videos, check out my trailer, it gives a good introduction to the channel. Anyway, um, so really, uh, how often to weigh yourself? Hopefully this will be a short video. I always say that and end up at like 15 minutes, so we'll try and set a new speed record. Um, ultimately, I think the answer to that question comes down to what works for you. Um, you know, I've, I've seen advice to weigh yourself every day. I've seen advice to weigh yourself once a week. I've seen advice to weigh yourself not at all, to just not weigh yourself. Um, now, for me, I think, you know, it ultimately comes down to what's going to help you to keep track of your progress without demotivating you because your body will go through cycles. Your weight will go up and it will go down. Um, you know, it's, it's got less to do with what it does on a day-to-day -day basis and more to do with how it trends if you are in fact trying to lose weight. Um, you know, it's, it's really important when we're on the topic of talking about weighing yourself that it's only measuring one aspect of weight loss and that is how much you physically weigh your mass. Um, it doesn't tell you the composition of your body and, and even the scales that you can now buy and, and which I use, which give you an approximation of body fat percentage, of lean muscle, of water, you know, they're pretty rough estimates. It's not exactly a medical appliance. Um, you know, it's not the same as sitting in a, uh, some of the body fat tests or, or, or chambers that I've seen where you lie down in water and I think it's salt water and it measures your displacement, gives you a much more accurate reading. You know, if you, if you go to a nutritionist um, that has access to that kind of technology, that's a much more accurate way to figure out what your body fat percentage is. But just understand that your weight is just one number. It doesn't represent necessarily whether or not you're losing fat, which most of us are trying to do. It just represents your total mass on a scale. So, you know, it's important to contextualize what it is you're measuring. So, um, you know, to, to put in context for me personally, I have been tracking my weight on a regular basis now since you know, Boxing Day. Um, I was tracking myself weekly, which to be honest is probably where I would still be doing in terms of frequency. I would be weighing myself once a week just to see how I was trending over time. Um, however, I actually switched to daily because, and it's, and it's stupid, I will admit that it's stupid, but um, you know, I'm using the Lose It app to track my macros, to track my nutrition. It's also tracking my weight and various other things and gives me trend lines. And I really like using the app. Uh, it's it's uh, user interface is very easy to use and it's, it's user friendly, um, but it gives you points for eating vegetables. It gives you points for um, tracking your weight on a regular basis. It gives you bonus points at the end of the week if you've tracked every meal for a week and you've tracked your weight every day. Now, in order to, to kind of push my motivation levels, I joined a couple of challenges, which is something else the app offers, where you know people can create challenges to, exam to for example, lose 20 kilos in three months might be a challenge and people jump onto that and they join it and they get allocated points based on, you know, how much uh, activity they've been doing, how much weight they've lost as a total, how often they eat vegetables. Uh, and one of the things that gives you points is to weigh yourself on a daily basis. And you get a bonus at the end of the week if you've weighed yourself all seven days in a week. So I'd switch to daily just to get maximum points for the challenge. Um, and I've kind of stuck with it ever since. But again, you know, you, you have to go into something like that with an understanding that your weight will fluctuate. Now I'm sitting at a stable 90 kilos ish. 
Uh, I think I might have that written down. Yeah, it's about 190, 899 pounds, somewhere in that space. Uh, and I've been stable like that now for three weeks. Now that doesn't mean my weight doesn't change day to day. When I talk about stable, I mean, it varies from 89 and a half kilos to, you know, 90.2, 90.3 kilos. That's stable, it's stable around the 90 mark. Um, but when I weigh myself every day, I can actually see my weight goes up and the next day it'll go down and the next day it'll go up and the next, the day after that, it might go up a second time. It's important to understand that it's natural for your body's weight to fluctuate. Um, your body goes through cycles, uh, and, and to not take too much notice of it when you put on weight, it's got less to do with day-to-day -day variances and more to do with trends. So that's, that's point one really is if you're going to weigh yourself on a regular basis, do it frequently enough that it gives you the information you're looking for when you understand what that information truly means, but don't do it so often that you're going to obsess about it. And I know people that have weighed themselves like two, three times a day. That's obsessing. There's no information that you can get out of weighing yourself multiple times a day that is healthy for your mental state, which therefore has a negative impact on your weight loss journey. So, you know, my advice when it comes to how often you should weigh yourself is do it often enough to give you the information that you want, understanding the context of what that information is really telling you, but don't do it too often as to possibly demotivate yourself. So my advice generally is weigh yourself once a week. It gives you enough information to track your trends over time, and it's over a significant amount of time to, to kind of give you some statistically useful information. Um, you know, if you don't care about your number and you're just doing it for interest's sake or for a lose it challenge, do it daily, but don't obsess about it. Don't stress when it goes up a little bit. Don't stress when it doesn't seem to be dropping. You're going to plateau naturally. Um, but going back to context, so, you know, I've got um, quite a few friends that spend a lot of time in the gym uh, and we'll get into to my gym journey in a second. Um, those guys weigh more than I do. At 90 kilos, uh, you know, there's a couple of mates at work, for example, that are roughly the same height as me and they weigh 100 kilos. But they're massive. They're, they're full of muscle. Uh, they're lean body tissues, you know, 12 to 15%. Obviously, 12 is quite ripped. Um, you know, and they weigh 10 kilos more than I do. Now, if all you're doing is weighing yourself on scales, then clearly that's not gonna give you a great result. You're not gonna feel positive about yourself if you had a target much lower than 100 kilos. But the reality is these guys are ripped. They're healthy, they're eating well, they're regularly exercising, and they're muscular. So, you know, and I weigh 90 kilos, and with a body fat percentage of 24-ish percent, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I carry a lot more fat than they do but I weigh 10 kilos less because as I've said on this channel before, fat weighs less than muscle does. So understand that when you're looking at a number on a scale, it's not telling you the whole picture. It's not telling you health. It's not telling you fat. Uh, it, it's not telling you a whole lot other than what your mass is on the scales. So understand that context. That's pretty much it. We're in at nine minutes. Um, I'll quickly give you an update on where I am. I'm, like I said, I'm in a much better place uh, this week. I've had some time away from work uh, over the weekend to start unpacking. I've gotten bedside tables. It's amazing what a difference that's made to me in terms of psychological stress of walking through a house where I know I'm living out of boxes and, and, uh, and suitcases. My television's working. Again, it's amazing how relieving it was to just sit down on the couch for the first time and watch a movie um, because I hadn't been able to plug my television in. Uh, because the equipment's sitting on the other side of the house and I had to wait for or the other side of the room. I had to wait for a really long HDMI cable. All boring shit, day-to-day -day stuff. But it's just, I'm in a much better place because I've started to finally feel like I'm making this new house my home. And it's really, I've really struggled not to feel like, to, to have no feeling or sense of home lately. Um, you know, it's okay to live out of a suitcase for a few days. Uh, in a hotel. It's even okay to live out of a suitcase for a week in a hotel because you're on holidays or you're in another place. There's lots to do and see. You're there for a reason. Your situation when you get back to the hotel or your home, um, you don't really give a shit about. But when it is when it is your home and you're living out of a suitcase for three weeks straight, that starts to suck really bad. So, um, you know, that's had a, that's had a really prof surprisingly profound positive impact on, on uh, how I'm feeling about things. I've started fasting again as of today. Um, so again, I'm back to my magic water. 
I have made a decision that is, I think pride was kind of driving me to stick with keto, um, but I wasn't sticking with keto. So it, it's kind of, I felt like if I didn't do something soon, it, I was going to fall right off the wagon. So I've made the decision to go back to my low fat, uh, low carb diet. Uh, so it's not a keto diet. I'm going back to chicken and rice, avocado and broccoli. I love that food and I was losing weight on it while I was fasting and on that diet. Uh, I may switch back to keto when I, you know, from my perspective, I don't have yet a sense of rhythm at home. I don't get home and, um, you know, have an hour and a half to cook. I don't, I haven't really settled into a routine where it's automatic. I get home from work, I get changed, I go and cook, I eat. You know, that normal rhythm, that cycle, I haven't found that in my new place yet. So, um, you know, to make it as easy for me to fall into that rhythm or develop that rhythm again, now that I've moved, I'm going back to a meal that I know I can prepare, excuse me, in 15 minutes. I don't have to think about it. Throw the chicken in, throw the, excuse me, throw the, the rice, uh, sorry, the broccoli in the steamer, throw the rice in the microwave, cut the avocado, dinner's done in 15 minutes. I can just sit down and relax. Uh, so until I get into that routine again, uh, I'm going to stick with that diet. Once I'm used to that cycle again, once I'm feeling much more comfortable in my home in life, I will uh, attempt a keto diet again. And when I say attempt, it's not like it's, you know, the end of the world to, to do it. It's just, it requires more preparation and thought. So I, I kind of want to find the routine first uh, and then I'll, I'll get back into keto. So there's that. Uh, I'm joining the gym tomorrow with my gym buddy, Paul. Um, I've already warned him, although he didn't reply to my SMS, so I don't know how he feels about it yet, but I've warned him that I might bring my GoPro to the gym um, to take some, some video recordings of how bloody weak I will be tomorrow. Um, but I think it'll be interesting to track it over time and it might be good for the YouTube channel to have a different environment than where I am now, which uh, at the moment, you can't see it, but I've actually got a green screen behind me because that white that white wall is horrible. Now I don't know yet until you will find you will know when you will see right at the start of this video what I decided to do with the background. But I haven't decided yet if I'm going to have a white wall with some random posters of stuff that's going on in my life that I'm interested in outside of fitness, uh, like a movie poster, for example, um, or I might just take a photo of the old old uh, desk setup, which is in another room now from where I'm recording and just throw the desk setup behind me because that's familiar territory. I don't know yet. I'm going to stuff around with it over the next night or so. And um, I guess you'll find out at the start of the video and it'll make more sense now. Uh, anyway, that's all I've got time for. So again, uh, if this is your first time on the channel, thank you very much for joining me. I release videos every Tuesday uh, and really I'm focused on a, on a weight loss journey and a no bullshit approach to what works and what doesn't work for me personally in the hopes that it might help motivate you to, to get out there and, and start losing weight. Um, thanks very much for joining me and I will see you next Tuesday, hopefully with some interesting video footage of the gym. I think it's going to be a little bit awkward bringing a camera in, but it is just a little GoPro. So I'm hoping it just disappears into the background pretty quickly and Paul and I can get on with the workout. Uh, and I also get a crash course in being a good gym buddy because I've never been a gym buddy before. I've got no idea what he wants to do. So I guess we'll find out tomorrow and you'll find out next Tuesday. Anyway, until then, have fun, take care. Um, stay fit. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs>